I hear you. Dude, I'm really happy now. <laughs> this is it. Everything you've always dreamed. Everything except hair. <laughs> Just give me some hair. <laughs> So check this out, there are people out there, maybe you're one of them, spreading vicious rumors and lies. About what? About this base. Not this exact base. This what base? about the P base? Saying that it's a one trick pony. No. Saying that it's boring. Boring. And saying that it's not versatile. But the reality is, it is the ultimate workhorse. And we are here today to dispel these rumors and show you how the P base actually crushes everything. Like it removes all of the BS. Oh, uh, shall I shall I use my active electronics oh, on this? Oh, oh, which pickup shall I oh, use? Where do I put the battery? Oh, should it be an 18 volt or a nine volt? <laughs> it removes all of that, you've got one pickup. <laughs> one pickup, one volume and one tone, but it is way more versatile than people give it credit for. Absolutely, and today we're gonna show you one secret trick that you can do to make this bass work in any genre of music. But let's take it all the way to the beginning. Let's take it back to the man, the myth, the legend, James Jameson, where it started playing with Marvin Gaye. The track is what's going on. I'm so happy this exists. I know. One finger. Ooh. One fit the hook. Yes. And when he goes onto that G string as well, the tone is so fat. Yeah. yeah. Oh. What's going on? But how is he getting that sound? Okay, really, there's three things going on here. It's about the strings, the muting, and his hand placement. Oh, okay. Right? So he has flat wound strings. And on that, you can tell he's got really fat flat wound. Like, yeah. these are flat wounds on this bass, but they're not as... No. Like, if you want to rewind and listen to him playing that G string, you can tell that it's like a telegraph pole. It is. They're yeah. really thick. They're really thick labella flats. These are labellas as well, but a little thinner gauge. Yeah. Then he has sponge back. So the second thing is the sponge, and he's got it underneath the strings, right. hasn't he? Yeah. Yep. But we have a Nordy mute here. I'm gonna pop that on, right? And then where he's playing, because he has that cover here, it forces his hand placement. He puts three fingers here, plays with one finger in front of the cover, and then just gets this smooth. It's all about the placement, yeah. Can you move back towards the bridge just so people can hear the, the, the opposite of that? So move your hand back towards the bridge. Yeah, so if I play back here. Different vibe. Yeah, like check it out. Exactly. So different as you play up nearer the neck. Yeah, and if he didn't have that big pickup cover on, he might have played somewhere else, but he rested his hand on the pickup cover to get that, you know, it gives him that, that vibe. Yeah. And it just cuts so great in the track as well. Here's a clip of Sign Seal Delivered, Bob Babbitt on bass, and just listen to how it just cuts through the mix like a freaking knife. Yes, right. Like a fool, I went and stayed too long. It just sits so well in the mix. Yeah. Because the frequency band is right. so small compared with the big active bass, right? Playing with fingers, right? Jameson fingers, Bob yep. Babbitt fingers, yep. Carol Kay also played a P bass with a pick, mm -hmm. with a pick. And although she's got that same, it's still got that old school vibe, right? It has something completely different. So check out Carol here playing it with the pick. I'd have never played that. So good. And you can just see a glimpse as well. She's actually got, well, I'll just tell you guys in one second. I'll just go in. Check it out. What a great bass line. Yeah. Good vibrations, obviously. Brian Wilson, the Beach Boys. Yes. But Carol has got flats on. She's using a pick. Interestingly, picking in the same spot that Jameson was. I'm oh, yeah. sure that that is intentional. She's not right back here by the bridge. She's right, right here. Give them a vibe, yeah. dude. Give them the vibe. Yeah. What 
lot of vibe. And obviously, we've got the Nord in Mute on here as well. Oh, which yeah. Is this thing from Nordstrand. But Carol, she did use Mutant, but she did it different to Jameson, right? Jameson sponge un underneath the strings. Carol liked felt taped to the top. Just masking tape so, all yeah. over the base. And although it looks pretty wacky, that's what she prefers to get that tone of hers. But we've been talking all about this in the context of the 60s, yeah. right? And then there was a time period where the P-Bass became kind of uncool. Completely uncool. I feel like maybe in the 90s, not to everyone, but- the Dude, were, 80s? Yeah, there were all these active basses, bright sounds. Fretlesses. Yes. The, 80s, the 90s was super active. Yep. You know, everybody was playing Ken Smith. Yeah. And then the 2000s came. Yeah, there yeah. was this P-Bass renaissance that happened, right? Where you have Pino Palladino switching from his classic fretless thing to playing a P with flats, bringing back the old school thing with D'Angelo. We've got a clip right here of them doing chicken grease on the Chris Rock show. Check this out. Check it out. It feels incredible. Oh. Here we go. <laughs> what is that? Oh, I'm not plugged in! <laughs> Do you feel like since Pino, since 2000, has it gone anywhere? It's never gone anywhere. No. It's always existed since 2000. We had the uncool period. Yes. Then it has just sustained since 2000. It has. And I've got to say that, you know, there's been a slew of amazing players that have played P-Bass, and I get sometimes P-Bass anxiety when I drift away from it for a little bit. I'm like, Am I not cool anymore? Dude, do I, I know. Do I need a P-Bass to be cool? I know exactly what you mean. Let us know in the comments, have you had that anxiety that like... It's anxiety. Yeah, am I not cool because I'm not playing a P-Bass? But it has, it's been played by so many great players since 2000. And we've got a clip right here of Jamerio Artis, who needs some more love. Jamerio, we love you. We freaking love you, dude. He's playing with Bruno Mars here. P-Bass, flats, so old school vibe, but with a pick. And this sounds killer. Oh. Again, straight through the mix, yes. like a knife. But it also sits. Like, how yeah. does it do both? You guys can do the power. Because it crushes everything. <laughs> yeah, dude, show us how to play this thing. Oh, so what, what's going on here? It's just palm muting, right? So I'm flat picking on flat wound strings. I'm not at an angle, and I'm just putting the pick straight flat down on the string. It sounds so good. It's such a sound, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's so cool. You got Carol Kay playing with a pick way back in the day. And then you have modern players like Jamario is doing it now. Yeah, and, but he's got like a very different thing. If you listen to Carol, super mellow, again, in front of the yeah, pickup, like right, Jameson, right. Yes. Jamario back near the bridge, Punchy. cutting through. Yeah, it just sounds killing, yeah. Hey, and if you wanna learn these bass lines, we actually have a PDF workbook that we have made for you. You can grab it in the description below. So everybody considers this the workhorse, but why? Why is it the way? Well, it's because you can walk into any mainstream commercial studio and the engineer, as you whip this bad boy out the case, yeah. is going to breathe a sigh of relief when you do so. Because I've learned the hard way. Oh, me too. You've learned the hard way. Yes. And so has Sean Hurley, bass player for Alicia Keys, Robin Thicke, John Mayer. He's also learned the hard way. The first thing that actually happened was I was at a session at a guy's home studio and I played my one bass, which was active, and they loved my playing and didn't like the sound. Really? It was, wow. they were, there was talk of like, oh, that's cool. What will we do to fix it in the mix? Will we oh, press oh. it? But my buddy handed me a P bass. And I said, oh, let me play it with Bobby's bass. And wouldn't you know, same guy, same hands, I start playing and they go, ah. Oh, That's it's it. fitting in the track better. And so at that moment, I said, well, I got to get one of these. Yeah. And I got to, I just started testing things out as, hey, 
should I use this more often? And within two years, it was, I was using a P base on every session. I think the reason too that it fits so well into a mix is because the frequency spectrum is reduced, yeah. right? You don't have all that tip top high end of like active basses and all that sub frequency. Mm -hmm. So it leaves room for cymbals, keys, guitars, kick drum, kind of slots right it's in the middle. It's not competing with anything. Right, right. It fits perfectly into a mix. Yeah. Hey, if this video is bringing you any value whatsoever, please check and make sure that you're subscribed. It helps the channel out and we want to make more of this content for you. But dude, right at the top of the video, you said that was this really cool trick of making this thing like into a super versatile instrument. There is. What's the trick? You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You ready? Come here. All you have to do is change your strings from flats to rounds. Ah. Mine sounds so sad. Oh. Completely different instrument with rounds off. Completely different. Can you slap a P bass? I think you can. I think you can. And if you want to see how that's done, here is Ready Freddie Washington, the guy who played on that track. Here he is playing it for you so you can see exactly what's going on. So cool. Yeah, and it just like, it has such character. And look, when he's playing it, he's not going. It's a dig, 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 dig. He's right. not that, it's really, really controlled. Yes. Know, and if you want to get that, if you want to check it out, we've got the PDF down below with all of the tab and notation for you. And again, it's completely free. Hey, it's time. Hand over that bass. The rounds, huh? Yeah, give me huh? that bass. Give me that bass. <laughs> we got to demonstrate some more versatility. It's not just Motown. It's not just funk. What is it? It's rock. It's punk. We're going to take it to The Clash. Paul Simonon playing London Calling. Check this out. <laughs> yes. Give them a glimpse of that bass line because it's really cool. People sleep on Paul Simonon. They do. Check it out. We're seeing how this fits into a rock context, early punk context. It's a workhorse. It's every person's bass, right? It's not fancy. Paul Simonon grabs a P bass and it works perfectly in this style. But I tell you what, do you know who else everybody sleeps on? Adam Clayton yeah. of U2. Everybody sleeps on Adam, and I think his bass playing and his specifically his bass lines are killing. And he gets one of the best P bass tones in the business. Ooh. Legendary bass yeah. tone. Legendary. You said that this might be like your favorite P bass sound. It is. <laughs> is it? Yeah, it's my favorite P bass sound. Dude, this is a tune for my youth. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Great heart on the bass, too. It's beautiful. Yeah. And it's just roots and thirds. That's right. And a crushing bass tone. Yeah. I mean, I feel like he has an amp sound, whether that's a real amp or a simulator, I'm not sure. And a bit of chorus. Yeah, right? there's some chorus so on there, So it's just yeah. bringing us back to yeah, the dude. 80s. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Show us it. Yeah, here we go. That's it, super simple. It's beautiful. And we'll have the tab and notation on the PDF for you as well, so grab it down below in the description for free. Hey, hmm? it's time to make all your dreams come true. Oh. Yes. Come on, come on, let's have it. Yes. Oh. <laughs> That's so good. good. It's beautiful melody. It's beautiful. I think you're a little more partial to the slash part, though. <laughs> <laughs> just the hair, dude. Just the hair.
But it is, it is like just a legendary baseline. Legendary. There's so many times that we've talked about this baseline yes. and never made a video about it. So this is it. <laughs> this is a this is a moment. <laughs> Let's do it. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, okay. Well, we've got Duff McKagan playing. Uh, P bass. I mean, he has a PJ. It's a good job he's playing a P bass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's playing a P bass. Yeah. yeah, he is. And uh, he's got a bit of chorus on as yeah. well. Smidge. Right? Yeah, and he's playing this cool line. With a pick. With a pick. Yeah. I love that part. Then he goes. Oh. <laughs> is it ba da da? Yeah. <laughs> I think so. It is today. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that is just legendary to it's, me. It's legendary. But dude, are there any other like rock metal bands that have like the P bass is kind of like the centerpiece of their sound? Yes, but we have to go back to flats. Bass player? Steve Harris. Rounds? No! Flat wounds! Flat I'm breaking the rules. <laughs> you know he wrote this tune too? Did he? Yes. Woo, it's fast. And he's galloping. Yeah, dude, you said there was like something you wanted to reveal. Oh, you need the flats. Give me that bass, trade me back. <laughs> trade me back. Right, so Steve Harris plays a P bass with flats. His flats are a little newer, he has a brighter sound, but it's still kind of old school. Has he got loads of distortion on his sound? No, Nothing. it's pretty clean Whoa. actually. And I will say, I always thought he did that gallop thing with three fingers. Man, I'm, I suck at it too. <laughs> I was ready, I was, I was just waiting for that. All the, this entire video has been leading up to that moment. The horse? Everybody, everybody thought it was about the slash vibe. It was actually about the, the horse. I was thinking more like a mule. Oh my <laughs> anyway, God. Anyway, how are you doing it? Okay, here's the thing. He doesn't do it that way. What? No, he doesn't. All he does is he plays one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one. I can't do it. Yes. Needs to, huh? Like imagine. Oh. One, one, two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one. Wow. Okay. No maiden cover bands for me. Oh, know. it's brutal. And I mean, I can't even get that triplet thing to happen unless I play really light. Mm. And even then. Oh yeah, show everybody the show them the riff because it's really cool. We'll make sure it's on that PDF down in the description for you as well. Oh, it sounds terrible. Wicked line. Though. Sounds terrible when Wicked I do it. Line. Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Steve Harris. I mean, we bow down to you. Like, such a great sound and attack, and he's running all over the stage. When I try to play like that, it just sounds terrible. But he's got these flats on the bass. It's Killing incredible, it. yeah. yeah. Do you know who else I can't play like? <laughs> do you know who else I can't play like? And in fact, nobody can play like this man, which is, there's not many people you can say that about, but there's nobody that can play like this man that you're about to check out. And for me, it just blows my mind what he can do with the P bass. The yes. ultimate example of versatility and rule breaking on the P bass. Ladies and gentlemen, not that many ladies, unfortunately. We do need more bass ladies. If you're out there, come and join the clan. But ladies and a lot of gentlemen, here <laughs> is Mr. Billy Sheehan. <laughs> Can you do that? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh. There's no man alive that gets harmonics out of a P bass like Billy Sheehan. That's true. The end. <laughs> That's true. And like this P bass he's playing here is, I know everybody knows him for the, you know, Yamaha basses. Right. This was the first one. Right. He calls it the wife and it's got two pickups in it. So it's got a P bass pickup, but it's also got an EBO right. in the neck position. And he has different amps for the different pickups. I've been doing it wrong all these years. Amazing. Are you jealous of his rig? There's many things I'm jealous of right now, dude. <laughs> Hairs at the top of the list. <laughs> top of the list. The raccoon tail. The chops. 
I'm Ooh. stopping it right there. I'm stopping it right there. Dude, the P bass crushes everything. It crushes everything. But does it? I thought we said that the jazz bass crushes everything. Mm. Oh. Rickenbacker crushes everything? Oh man, I love a Rickenbacker. Stingray crushes everything? What about a wall? Gibson Grabber? A Mustang? Jackson? Spectre? Chavel? How about a little uh, Sukop? Greg Kerbo? Come on, Tobias. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>